For very uh, egoistic purposes, I really love this project. <laughs> of course, of course, it's something you love. So to get to swim in those waters, like what yes. isn't to love? Yes. So for whoever will be listening later, a little introduction of who you are um, or how I met you, I guess. I want to start there. Um, and I've stopped... Well, I decided to not say years anymore because in the first two episodes I missed, like, I m misremembered the year of when I started meeting the person. <laughs> and they corrected me, which is nice. <laughs> we were correct in the end. But so I had met you a significant time ago, a significant amount of time ago. Um, <laughs> And I don't remember actually exactly how I met you, but I, it was somehow online. We have never met in a physical space that we share, where we share the same air. But um, it was about writing. And I was actually looking for something else. And then I saw your write-a-thon, I think it, you called it. Mm -hmm. And then I saved this for a bit later. Um, and then I saw it, and since then I've been following your work very regularly, actually, and I find it really, truly inspiring. And um, so if you wonder now who this is, this is Stella Orange <laughs> I'm talking to, and she is a wordsmith. This was also something that you mentioned somewhere in the beginning when I found you, and I love that word already, wordsmith. Um, and Stella leads workshops and conversations for people who want to get to know the story they're living. She's the founder of Writing Your Way Home, a series of writing workshops where folks explore their writing words and stories together. She hosts a writing group on Wednesday afternoons where people write together silently on video conference and then sip tea and chat about writing, ideas, and imagination. You can find out more at her website, www.stellaorange.com. And yes, I invited you to talk with me about integrity today. Hmm. Um, and I invited you, one, because I think gen in general, your work is inspiring, and two, um i'm very curious about your input because you deal with words all the time mm. and three because you started a collaboration with some two with two friends and colleagues um that for me was outstanding in the world of marketing especially in the subject of integrity um but before I continue talking, I wondered if you had anything else that you wanted to share about who you are before we um, to be here. I think that's it. You've covered, you've covered the bases. So uh, yeah, I think that's great. And thank you for inviting me too. It's not every day. This is the first time in my life in 41 years that someone has asked me to talk with them about integrity. So I was walking the dog <laughs> this morning and I was like, what are my thoughts? about integrity. So yeah, I'm mm -hmm. to, uh, conversing with you. Yeah. So my first question that I've been asking and that I find it's kind of the biggest one at the same time as the most basic one mm -hmm. um, is if you have a concept of what integrity means for you and how you, yeah, what this word means for you or the concept what does integrity mean? Bear with me. I, I tend, to, when I'm encountering a new idea, I tend to write through, like I'm a writer. So sometimes I get jumbled in conversation. So I'm shooting from the hip here. I don't have anything yeah. written on this and I don't normally talk about this. So for me, integrity is really around like acting on your values and acting what you believe in. And so... I think that there's probably a moral component to it. Like, I do think that there's just one kind of integrity, which is either your 
looking out for other people as well as yourself or you're not like it's the simplest root level it would be something like that mm -hmm. but i think the thing that's more interesting and perhaps more useful to me personally is the idea of like what one of my friends call it like do your insides match your outsides mm -hmm. so like do the things that you hold dear in your heart and the ideals that you live for like do those show up in your actions and how you treat yourself and other people and non-humans i think too so let's yeah <laughs> like the dog that you were walking this morning <laughs> yeah like the dog like right i was listening to a podcast about what the they were talking about uh climate vulnerability mm -hmm. and i'm an american and like we don't talk on a national level very much about like the climate like it's a pro-business environment that doesn't talk about the earth mm -hmm. and my you know my sister-in-law is european my brother lives in sweden with her they've got three kids i spent some time as a child growing up in europe and so i've seen a different way mm -hmm. i also lived in asia like i lived in japan mm -hmm. and i've seen what it is to have cultures that actually have reverence for the planet and so i, I actually think we're out of integrity environmentally in this country like we just had a presidential election last year and neither candidate mentioned the fact that the world is getting warmer and it's a human caused problem like what <laughs> so to me that's more of the standard boilerplate like there's a collective integrity that we share but mm. then also on a personal subjective level it's like what are the unique values or ideals that you as a human being stand for and how do those show up in your life? So I guess I'm talking into two different realms. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I can imagine in a way these, like, because there are these two realms, it sometimes can become a bit tricky or like finding out, okay, where, if, if I want to fulfill or live up to all of my values on all levels in like the whole, uh, take care of the earth and take care of myself and take care of my little child or my uh, home or like all of these things sometimes can be overwhelming for people or like I think I wonder if this is where the overwhelm comes sometimes yeah because we're just trying to like put pants on before we leave the house and like feed <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah um, do you have a physical sensation that you connect to integrity, either to like feeling when you are in line with like what's inside and what's outside, or also when this is not the case, when you feel the dilemma? I do, but I kind of circumscribe it. So, in, so, you know, I've been in business for the last like nine going on 10 years. And that's really where I came to be most conscientious and conscious of integrity. Mm -hmm. Because as a business owner, as you know, like you meet a lot of people. And so you have to read people really fast and decide, is this someone that's worthy of your trust or not? And I espouse the idea of like trust, but verify, like I'm going to go through the world trusting people unless they prove differently and I talk to a lot of people and a lot of people are full of shit and so <laughs> like knowing like having to just calibrate very quickly and sometimes I'm wrong but yes so so in that realm I feel like I've practiced it a lot practiced integrity a lot not perfectly by any stretch of the imagination but um I do have a felt body sense like I just for me it like it I don't know, maybe you've got some thoughts on how to organize it, but like there's a personal integrity, like a secret integrity, like just me and the universe or me and God or me and life, capital L, mm -hmm. where there's this understanding of like the kind of human being I came here to be and no one else will ever see it. I might not even be able to express it using words, mm -hmm. but like for me, like, you know, there's, I have an imperative to be myself. And when I was younger, I used to talk about it as being more of myself and less of someone else. Mm -hmm. So in my 20s and 30s, that was a real thing. And that really was, my learning was around not just going with the flow, but standing up for what was true inside my heart and basically like revealing myself to other human beings. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like, you know, that served me well for those decades. And now I'm just at the beginning of my fourth decade and the game, the dance has changed. Like I know how to do that. Uh -huh. And it's not just about me, it's about community. And I've got this expanding like political consciousness right now that I think a lot of people around the globe, but certainly in the United States are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't quite know how to talk about that yet because I'm still very much in process. But uh -huh. um, yeah, like I can feel that too, but I'm not like, like environmentally, like I just brought up the idea of environmentally and just this weekend I was like, oh, I should really like write down the fact that I want to make decisions about our house based on the environment. Mm -hmm. Cause it's just not in my brain right now. Like it, my brain has just been around like, okay, how do we figure out how to go grocery shopping in an organized regular fashion? So there's food in the house, like these very like, Maslow's hierarchy of needs like I've just been tending to these very basic needs and now I'm kind of like okay I can do that pretty well mm -hmm. what else can I add and mm -hmm. ultimately my vision for my life is to be like politically and civically engaged mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not right now like mm -hmm. I'm reading a whole bunch I'm listening to a whole bunch of things but I'm not going to meetings or you know organizing things it's just not where I'm at mm -hmm. So I don't know what that feels like yet in my body. Like I'm just kind of, I think of it like these different kind of concurrent journeys. And some, I know what it is to have a felt visceral sense and others I don't, but I also trust in the transference of skills. Like I'll know it when I get there. <laughs> I'm, just not, I'm just not there yet. So I do practice as best I can, like a gentleness. Yeah. With one I find it interesting in what you just, mentioned somehow the thought that there, there there's something about in a way the capacity to expand beyond okay so taking care of your integrity personally and then taking care of the integrity of you with the people that you connect to um right next to you in a way and then coming to the next stage of saying okay how do we do this on an even larger level like nationally or even then at some point looking at the world or like the earth or something like this mm. something well, about that's how i think about it mm. do you think about it like that if i think about it like that do you well i um i i very much connect to what you said about like the inside representing the outside mm. like really in a way living what what I feel as being true or necessary or relevant for in a way a good life or a good way of connection and community um, and like I certainly know this sense of overwhelm sometimes when I feel like yes I would want that in the whole sphere I would want that also for the world and the universe and like you know everything that is basically and then feel like, oh, but where do I even start? And then what struck me now with what you were saying, it is like this, I guess is something that I can recognize also that sometimes it's about in a way training and expanding the, my scope mm -hmm. or like, okay, yes, within this, now I'm managing to live, like I, I managed to live what I preach or I managed to live what I, not even preach but like what's my message and what I feel like is true from within but I can see in other spheres like when I'm further away or maybe it's not further like in some situations with my family for example it's more challenging for me no. um, where there's more emotional no, I'm missing the English word but it's like more charged maybe in some situation yes Mm -hmm. and so there I can feel like okay it's still more challenging to be in like to feel like I'm in integrity with all of me when I'm talking to them or when I also think about the yeah okay so how do I engage politically for example if I really want to but at the same time now for example talking to you and talking more publicly also in, in in terms of my business i feel like i'm growing there am i becoming more i'm showing more what i want to be showing mm. and so there's something of, about training in a way i want like practicing, right? for me, yeah 
practice. And then there's and something about focus also. What are you seeing with focus? Let's say more. So that sometimes it's impossible to take care and focus on everything at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have to allow myself to focus on one thing. And that may mean that I'm missing something else mm -hmm. next to it. But I'm human. So I can't take care of everything at once. I'm a human still. <laughs> but I can use the focus to learn in this one area. Okay, right now I'm concentrating on this area. How can I learn or expand here? Mm. And then maybe I sh like I've grown there and then I'm shifting focus to, okay, how can I expand this also in another area? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you want to answer, where do you find it the most challenging in everyday life? Like what are challenging moments in terms of integrity? Um, and if there are any, do you have some sort of practice or tool that you use to move towards this intention of living what you feel inside and out. Gosh, I always love it when people ask me questions that they've thought deeply about. I'm like, I've never thought about that. Like, I've never thought about where my integrity is weak. Um, it's just not how I frame the world. Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, on the simplest level, what comes to mind is like, I've got pretty good integrity with myself. I really am challenged by having integrity with other people. Like. I just got married two years ago. Like I just started a business with two other women last summer. I'm just moved to a town where like I've been kind of a nomad for the last 20 years of my life. And now I'm joining like a geographic community where people don't share the same views that I do. And mm -hmm. I've been sort of isolated and kind of in my own bubble. And now I feel like I'm landing and joining physical space again. And yeah, like my neighbor across the street calls Asian people Orientals and I freak, mm -hmm. I freak out when that happens. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, you can't say that, but like, she's an older woman, she's a widow. Like, so what do I do in those sorts mm -hmm. of, like, it's that, that's like my growing edge right now. Like when I was younger, I would just write those people off and be like, fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that anymore because I'm older because where we are like historically where I am in my own life and that's the stuff I don't know how to deal with it's like the little it's like one of my clients like former clients keeps sending me on Facebook messenger like keeps sending me these random memes and he doesn't say how are you and he doesn't say hey still I'm thinking about you he just sends these to me once a week and I'm a private person. And so if people have something to say to me, like I'll respond to them, but I feel almost obligated to respond. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff undoes me because I just have realized that I have invisible rules that the rest of the world doesn't ab like abide by. And so like, like when my personal boundaries get crossed, I get like in the heat of emotion and I just get undone. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I like, think about it and think it like I thought about this guy all weekend because this is yeah. the fourth time he's done it in as many weeks and I'm like yeah. I, I think these are corny like I'm kind of grumpy because you're sending me something aesthetically that I don't think is pleasing it actually makes the world uglier that you're sending these to me like I'm a judgmental horrible horrible person and that's like that's my edge right now is like oh Maybe he's just telling me, I don't know what he's telling me. Maybe he's telling me he's thinking of me. Maybe this is his weird networking technique. Like, I have, I have no idea. And uh -huh. so that, it's those little tiny things, not with people in my inner circle as much, it, although I have trouble there too, but it's like the people that are like more adjacent to me that I don't necessarily have a personal relationship with that don't share my aesthetic that don't share like how I want life to be, that don't share my sense of art or beauty in the world and may or may like, 
I can't, yeah, look, look, I just can't stop talking. My, <laughs> this, is it, this is it, India. My husband's aunt sends, what are those called? Chain letters mm -hmm. via Facebook. And it's like these weird magical thinking, like if you pass this along, goodness will happen to you. Mm -hmm. And I just want you, and it's attached to love. Like, it's like, I love you. So I sent you this picture of Snoopy with a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. If you want to share the love in the world and you want there to be peace in the world, you'll share this along too. And I, like that breaks me. Like, I don't know what to do with that. I'm such a sophisticated mm -hmm. person, except when someone sends me a chain letter that I'm now related to. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah I don't know what to do with I and I still she's done this a couple times I just emailed my or I just messaged my client my former client back and was like thanks that's funny hope you're well like didn't know what to say but I was like give it a shot but I still can't figure out what to say that's an in integrity to my aunt-in-law mm. so I say nothing and I'm just like like to your point of focus I'm just like yeah take a number this is like this ranks number 45 on my to-do list today mm -hmm. And that breaks a little part of me because I don't think we should treat other human beings like that. Like in an ideal world with endless resources and infinite time, I would acknowledge everyone that is coming to seek connection with me because mm -hmm. I'm awesome. And I know that I can bestow on them great. I know I sound like a narcissist, but like, yeah, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. How's that for an answer? Very wonderful answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I, because I think, I mean, it, I find, especially when talking to people that are idealistic and have strong values or like want to change something in the world, for example, of how people interact with each other or how there can come like such a high expectation of themselves or like that they shouldn't have this kind of thoughts or they, you know, should always know or how to murderous thoughts over minutia. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, like I should know how to deal with this or I should yeah. um, have a like helpful answer to this person or like find some way. Um, and I, like, I personally just find it a relief, I guess, like to be in like touch and conversation with people that yes, want a very different way of interaction to be real, but also realize it's not like that it's an intention and it's in a, like what you also said earlier, it's like a practice, yeah. right? It's like working or like noticing, okay, here I am not so good at this yet. <laughs> or ever. Or, or ever, yes. Also in this, like, maybe it's also not the highest priority. Like what would happen if you just never answered this person? No. And that's actually well. like, that's how I've learned to stop making myself crazy. Like I remember I was traveling when I was younger and I went to India and there's just really a dramatic difference between wealthy people and tourists in India and like the people that are living on the streets and stuff. And like, I'd never, I had, no, I had seen that sort of evolving second world poverty, but like people would come, like touts would come up to you or would come up to me and want to take me to a shop or like, it just felt like I didn't never, I never quite understood what the game was, but it felt like I, you know, I looked foreign. They knew I had money. And so there was a game there. And so it was this weird, like, not quite knowing what was going on. And I had this ideal of like, oh, you're another human being. I, we are connecting human to human. But by the end of a month there, like, I just ignored people just like everyone else because it was too much. It was like so, such an assault to my nervous system mm -hmm. and to my system. And like, I'm not proud of that. And I was like, well, like, this is a different situation <laughs> like this. I don't know how to handle this. I may never know how to handle this. And also like put your own air mask on first before tending to other people. And I know that there's other people that see that and they can't go back to their homes and they end up devoting their lives to serving the poor. Like I, I am aware of that, but that doesn't necessarily seem like that is what I'm called to do. That's not an integrity with my path. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, like that's. You touch an important point that I find. I mean, the word integrity comes from Latin. Uh, and I don't know how to say it in English, integere or something like this. But anyway, it means whole. Mm. And me being a body worker and like really body nerd in some ways. Um, I like really, for me, the word is so precious, I think, because it means whole. Yeah. And whole being, yes, values, yes, our actions, but also our physical well-being and our physical ability even to just interact and for this we do need i think to notice when we are overwhelmed or when the nervous system is like has too much input and like because anyway then like if you now were to stay in that situation with this sense that it's too much too much too much too much at the end you won't be able to give anything and you might have had the best of intentions of taking care of the world and all of this, but the world, neither the world nor you, nor this individual other person has anything from you exhausting yourself in a way that, that just destroys you. Or yeah. And I keep returning back to that image that you originally sort of, highlighted the idea like it starts with you and then it's your relationship with like one other person or two other people and then it's your relationship to the larger world like I think like that's that is how I think of it and it's like I can only take care of like you know in truth I think we can only manage ourselves <laughs> <laughs> and, <even> then, <laughs> yeah, if even, right? and so like when I really think about integrity like I'm also thinking about like what is just right in front of you. Like that's it. Mm. It's just whatever is in front of us. And maybe we can make choices about where we show up so that we can be in front of other scenarios or situations. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in that example of like being in India, I was just like, I can't be human with this other person. Like I do have to break with their gaze or like stop talking to them because I tried like over the course of those weeks, like tried talking to them, tried reasoning saying, Oh, I'm not interested. Yes. I'd love to go to your cousin's rug shop. <laughs> like, and so each time like seeing like how that worked out and how it felt in my body and you know, that, that sort of thing. And I don't know, like, I don't know that the, I don't know that that's settled for me and where I'm at now is saying, okay, like I can't expand endlessly out. If my center is not solid, if I'm not rooted, if I'm not centered, if I'm not grounded, I, what use am I to other people? And, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people wrestle with that idea. Like there's, I hear, especially with women, like they wanna just keep giving because they can see the need and all of this at the detriment mm -hmm. of their own well being. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I don't struggle with that. I don't know that I ever did, but I, I don't seem to struggle with that in the same way that I see a lot of people, especially women wrestling mm. with that. I have one more question. Mm. Um, and that is, if you have, like, if you have anything that you would like to share, any kind of practice or tool that you personally use to get back to that sense of your, like being solid or like noticing where you are and like being able to feel your integrity in moments when you might feel lost or might wonder where is there something off here or is there anything that yeah, i think the two tools that i would commend or recommend uh to your listeners is um one is nature like getting into nature um and for me i find like in solitude like when i get into nature by myself when there's no other influences or energy around it's just me in nature that can bring you right um and also writing like having a writing practice um 
just this morning I realized, like I don't write every morning, mm -hmm. but when I, I can feel kind of a buildup like in my body where it's like, oh, I've got a lot on my mind. I've got a lot on my heart. Like I need to, I just wrote a newsletter article about this. Like I need to chew. It's either, you know, if, if our emotional lives are like a bucket and they're full or our emotional lives are like a stomach and we're chewing, like we've bitten off all this stuff and we're chewing and we can't take another bite because there's still food in our mouths and we have to swallow <laughs> it and digest it and like, you know, nourish ourselves with the vitamins and the, the nutrition and then let go of whatever we, is not of use to us. Like I very much think of that in terms of like experience and like, you know, the way that I respond or interpret things. And so I think that like just sitting down to write like 10 or 15 minutes a day when you notice you're in that state or when you notice, geez, I don't know if I made the right call or I'm not sure how I feel about this or, you know, um, giving ourselves a non-judgmental space to just mess around and kind of move the pieces around and see how they relate. Uh, mm. that has been mighty helpful uh to me to just get under under the hood and look at it and just be like okay how am i feeling what am i noticing what's coming up um so you can chew your metaphorical food <laughs> <laughs> and be ready for more like so it's i guess for me it is a, a withdrawing from the group a withdrawing from the world of the community or social and tending to myself. I know not everyone processes like that. Um, but oh. for me, like that's, those are the things that really have supported me in like bringing myself back to center. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes. I ex exactly because not everyone processes in the same way. I'm asking everyone I talk to how they do it and to give ideas or like inspiration to things to try. Um, yeah. If you have any thought or question that you would like to ask me, I would, there, there's also time for that. How do you think about integrity as a body worker? Like what do the two things have to do with one another? So for me, they're like very close related. Like when my back is tense or when uh, there's an injury in the body or um, something is held, part of my energy is invested in this symptom. Hmm. And that means whatever I'm doing, if I now go and have a conversation with someone, um, part of my energy is not in this conversation, but is, is in this symptom. Mm. Um, and as anyway, there's, I mean, our energy is anyway in many different places. And we, I mean, we also digest and we breathe and we do a lot of things that we are not aware of the whole time that we are using energy on it. But I like personally experience in it in a way that if I manage to really like be in my body and give the attention to where I really want to focus it right now. I also need to be able to focus my body on this anyways. So the, the non-integrity experience would be, I have a conversation and constantly my mind slips and goes to this wound or to this symptom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be like constantly trying to go back and forth in a way. Right. And then there could be one way could be to say, okay, I'm deciding really that I want to have this conversation with you now. So I am putting all of my awareness to you so that we can talk. And then at a later point, I bring my attention to my knee, maybe if it's my knee that I'm, so that all of me can take care of the knee. And sometimes if I'm in situations where it's not really clear what is it that I like, where's my energy at or my focus at the body work can help me to notice. Okay. Yes. I wanted to have this conversation with you, but actually most of my energy goes into the symptom because it's really pressing right now. It's very important for me to take care of that. So in a way it's broadening the 
receptor or senses of to know what is important right now and what it is that I have to live if I want to be in like if I want inside and outside to be the same. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes sense until the last thing and then I got lost. It's so it's knowing it's I think what I'm hearing is like putting all of yourself like whether it's an attention on your knee in this example, or your intention is to be with someone, it's not splitting yourself mm -hmm. where you're half with your knee, half with the person, mm -hmm. but saying to the person, hey, I really need to go to the bathroom or I really need to take care of my knee and just doing what you need, like picking basically, picking the thing that's the number one, like that's where the focus is coming in. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I mean, I guess sometimes it could also be being able to acknowledge that I don't know right now what's priority because yeah. very often the case. Yeah. But, um, for me, body work, like the body work helps to acknowledge and be honest instead of pretend that I don't know. Like then I can be like, I can easier relax in a way and say, okay, shit, I want, really want this, but I also notice my body is hurting. I don't know how to deal with it, but I can maybe at least relax my belly and at least breathe. So there's as much energy as possible available. And if I contract my belly and stop breathing, I know for sure there's less energy to whatever, like either both the conversation and the knee. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Cool. Hmm. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah. I think um, maybe for today, I want to say thank you mm -hmm. for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And thank you everyone for listening. Um, and I will, yeah, I will introduce the next person the next time. <laughs> yeah.